You know why you are here. You want to replicate that trippy style of CGI from the 90s and 2000s. Or you're just some weirdo who found me by accident. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this video. An easy way to get that classic 90s aesthetic is to use the terrain-based 3D software Bryce 3D. And it's been around for a while, but it's still sold today with its classic 90s aesthetic. But if you are really feeling retro today, you can grab a crusty laptop. Oh wait, it's dead. So I guess I'll use this virtual machine I got running right here. With Windows XP, I can now run this old version of Bryce 3D. As you can see here, it has a simple user interface compared to most programs. This same interface is still used to this day in its programs, so that's nice. On the top, there are options to insert shapes and other objects with multiple tabs that I'll go on later. While on the left is a menu to navigate stuff, and for some reason it's really sensitive when I move it, like one little movement causes the camera to go flying. You can also move up and down as you please and left and right. In the top left corner is a little screen showing what your model looks like colored in and not wireframe. Below are the movement buttons as I mentioned. And below that is the multiple different types of rendering options. They all basically amount to the same thing. But you can also render animations which is nice. The create tab lets you create things and insert objects and all that wonderful stuff. The edit tab lets you edit things, rotate it, do stretchy things, and edit terrain to your liking. And the sky and fog, uh, oh no, I wonder what the sky and fog does. It controls the sky and fog. If you have absolutely no experience with 3D modeling like I do, this is the best we can get. It's quite simple, and it's even simpler to get something whipped up within a few minutes, which I really like. You can make forest and other weird terrain things. Now for the main thing Bryce was advertised to do. Complex terrain generation. Which can be done in the terrain editor by bon and spawning in some terrain. In which you can erode something, draw something. All these things are simple on their own, but with them combined it really makes a fleshed out experience. So many different options to edit this terrain to make it terrain. And even better, you can make animations too. So yeah, just take a look at this one I made with an eyeball. It's really interesting. The rendering process does take some time, but I think the final result is pretty good. Another selling point of Bryce was that it was so simple, a child could use it. And uh, I guess that's true considering I'm 15 years old, but um, yeah. For a program as old as this, um, this is quite user friendly. And overall, nice to use. You can't do anything too complex, like making models of humans and crazy stuff like that. It has complex things that are stripped out that you'd expect from other 3D modeling things, like rigging and all that beautiful stuff. Yeah, and that doesn't exist here. It causes it to feel less bloated for the average user and pretty easy for me and other complete idiots to use. And I guess I could vibe with that. Along with terrain customization, there is customization for the sky and water as well. You can decide the color, fog, and all sorts of things. You can set the position of the sun, even something like this creates many opportunities for customizing the landscapes. Clouds and fog can add so much to the things you create in here. There are also ways to import images and models, but they are like very specific file types which I don't quite like and I'm not about to go deal with that there's also texture customization yippee I think we've gotten all that we can on Bryce 3d so let's see if we can try some other old software you know Scott Cawthon the creator of Five Nights at Freddy's used this thing called 3ds Max I wonder if we can do the same thing in this virtual machine right here Oh boy, I can't wait to see what this has in store. Oh, oh, yeah, it's, it's dead. Much like the laptop, it's dead. Well, let's move on to something else. Blender 2.04, released all the way back in the year 2000. This is for people with more expertise, something I don't have. And finding a manual for this thing costs money. 
something that I used up on Genshin Impact. When you open up Blender, you are presented with what can best be described as a sensory overload. You have a massive render button and a massive anim button, acting as if you already know what you need to do. I bet if you're an expert at this, you probably would understand. Using the mouse wheel button, you can rotate the grid, pressing control zooms it out, and pressing shift makes you move it. There are many more hotkeys, but I don't understand what any of this is, so let's just try to insert a basic square. Well, after a few hours of panicking, I did it. I made a square. Now let's render the square. Hmm, that's some nice black void. If only I knew how to make a light source. Yippee, now I have a gray blob. This is going so well, but there's so many more things you could probably do in here. But I lack the skills to do any of them, so... I'm guessing a Blender expert could probably get some things done, despite the menus being what can best be described as utter garbage. But this was from the year 2000, so what were you expecting? Just by looking at this thing, it's quite clear there is so much I don't understand yet. Now let's see if Blender 1.6 is any better. Why is everything small? Well, those are some interesting CGI programs. Um, this was originally part of a larger video, but this part was cut so I could gush about Bryce 3D and complain about Blender 2.06. Why did they start out with that one? 